Today in the workshop, we'll be making what I'm calling the quick lock vice stop. Most vice stop designs require you to tighten a clamp with an Allen bolt or something similar, but this design instead uses a rather novel cam locking mechanism, meaning that it can be quickly locked in place or repositioned without the use of tools. In addition to that, the locking mechanism can be adjusted so that you can use it on a range of different vices. If you're interested in building one of these yourself, I have modeled this in CAD, and I will be releasing the drawings. So stay tuned to later in the video and I'll tell you exactly where and how you can get your hands on them. So let's crack on with the build. I picked up this bar of gunmetal at an auction recently and I'm gonna be using it to make the body of the vice stop. Gunmetal is an alloy of bronze and it's probably a bit extravagant for this project, but it's the only material that I've got in stock that's anywhere near the right dimensions. If you're gonna be making one of these, then mild steel should suffice just fine. So the first job is to cut off a suitably sized piece. And now over to the mill to square up the stock. And that face mill does leave an especially nice surface finish. The newly machined surface is our first reference face, so I'm gonna put that against the back of the jaw. The front face is still the rough casting, so I'm going to use a piece of welding wire in between the workpiece and the vice jaw to even out any irregularities in that rough surface and ensure that we've got a good hold on the part. Now we can machine the next face, which once finished should be exactly perpendicular to the first face. I'll use a file to remove the burr between our newly machined faces so that it will seat nicely in the jaws of the vise ready for the next machining operation. I'll use the wire again because of that rough cast face. And now that we've got three machine surfaces, two of which should be parallel, we can dispense with the wire and clamp them directly in the vice jaws. Now that we've got four machine surfaces, we just need to do the ends. And to ensure that they're perpendicular with the sides, I'll first set the part up with a square, and then check the setup with an indicator to ensure that the part is exactly vertical. That's done and now I'll flip the part over and I'm just machining the other end. And that's our stock squared up. Some of the corners didn't clean up, but I'll be machining those away later on anyway. But before I do that, I need to machine three holes in either side of the part to accommodate the vice stop rod. I'll start by locating the part with the edge finder and then using the spotting drill to locate the hole. I want these holes to be precisely four millimeters because I'll be using some four millimeter ground stock for making the end stop. So I'll be using a 3.9 millimeter drill and then coming in with a reamer. And I'll finish that hole off with this single flute chamfer tool. And then proceed to drill the other two holes on this side before flipping the part over and drilling three holes on the other side. In case you're wondering why we need six holes when we're only gonna be using one of them at a time, I wanted to have the option to move the stop up and down depending on what I'm gonna be doing, as well as being able to have it on either side of the vice stop. I made the stop itself from four millimeters stainless steel and I rounded one end, which gives us a single point of contact against the part in the vice. Alternatively, it has got a flat end if you'd rather have more contact area. Now I'm gonna move on to cutting this slot. It's 30 millimeters long and four millimeters wide. 
It's going to carry the cam lock mechanism. And the reason it's a slot is that the cam lock mechanism is adjustable to allow us to fit this uh, vice stop onto many different types of vice. I'm using a four millimeter slot drill for this operation and I'm cutting the slot before I mill away the rest of the body section just to make the work holding easier. So that's the slot finished. It's going to be quite difficult to deburr by hand, so I've decided to use a 45 degree chamfer mill to put a nice finish on the edge of that slot. We're over at the laser now and as the block is still square, I thought it would be easier to uh, put my maker's mark on it now rather than later on. If you're interested in this laser, I've got a video on it on my channel. I'll leave a link in the description. And this is where we are with the part so far. I'm now going to mill a recess in the underside of the part as per the drawings so that it will fit over the top of our vice jaws. So that's the body of the vice stop complete. The next thing we're going to make is the cam lock mechanism and we'll start with the cam itself. It's got a 2mm counterbore to accommodate the flange, an 8mm through bore for the boss and another bore there for the handle and these bores are offset from the centre by 1mm. This offset gives us an eccentric rotary motion when turning the cam and is the basis for our locking mechanism. As I use bronze for the body I'm going to use this bronze bar stock for the cam as well and I'm going to turn this down to 20 millimeters in diameter for a distance of eight millimeters. Over to the mill now to machine that central bore and counter bore. I've centered the mill spindle over the part and then I've offset it by one millimeter. I'll be drilling and reaming this hole to eight millimeters in diameter and about 10 millimeters in depth. Once parted off, this hole will go all the way through the part and this is gonna interface with the cam carrier that's gonna attach the cam to the body of the tool. Next up, I need to machine a 12 mm counterbore to a depth of two millimeters. And this is gonna accommodate the flange on our cam carrier. And the plan is to machine this feature by plunging in with a 12 mm end mill. And that doesn't look good. Check out the chatter on that. I have no clue why this end mill is chattering in that fashion. For some reason, I decided to persevere at this point, but it didn't get any better. In theory, I should have just been able to plunge with this end mill, um, but as you can see, we've got this horrible chatter and that's just not going to cut the mustard. If you've got any idea what the problem is here, I'd be happy to hear about it in the comments. What we need here is a smooth, clean face because this is going to be a bearing surface for our cam carrier. So I'm going to go over to the lathe now, set it up and see if I can rescue the situation. I'm dialing it in on that central reamed bore because it's a nice, clean surface. And I've had to use the four jaw instead of the three jaw chuck here because that hole is offset from the center of the part. And I've got the part running within one hundredth of a millimeter, which should be plenty good enough for what we need to do here. 
So now I can come in with the small boring bar and clean up that face. And that is much improved. In hindsight, maybe I should have just done this whole operation in the four jaw chuck. But anyway, let's move on to parting off. Whoa there. I've flipped the part in the chuck and we're now gonna face that back side. I'll deburr that hole and then the cam's complete and we can move on to the cam carrier, which is this component here. It's got a flange and a boss for the cam to ride on and then there's an M4 screw thread on the top for the locking nut. I'm going to be using some stainless steel for this part and the bar stock that I've got is already at 12 millimeters, which is the nominal dimension of the flange. So the first feature we actually need to machine is the boss and this needs to be eight millimeters in diameter. And a quick fit check with our cam and that looks good. Next up we need to reduce a portion of our component down to 4mm and this will form the shaft that fits through the slot in the body of the vice stop. Next up I'll cut a thread relief because we're going to thread the end of the uh, component there for an M4 thread for our retaining nut and we'll just put some chamfers on just to tidy things up and give it a quick polish. And then we're ready for threading. And uh, that wasn't supposed to happen. I guess trying to thread a small part like this under power in stainless steel was a bit ambitious. So yeah, I had to remake the part. So I've flipped the part around in the chuck and we're just gonna clean up that back face now. So that's our cam carrier finished and we can do a little fit test with the cam itself to see how they work together. And that fits rather nicely. One thing that is important to note about this part is that the boss of the cam carrier is very slightly proud of the cam itself. That clearance is important because we want the cam carrier to lock to the body of the vice stop and for the cam to be able to rotate freely. Off camera, I made this locking nut out of stainless steel. Very simple turning job. I also made a thick washer and we'll uh, put these together now just to see how it works. And that whole mechanism slides freely in the slot, which will give us our adjustment but we need a way to lock it down, so I'm gonna now make a lever for that locking nut. We'll start with marking the position of the lever so that I can drill a hole in the locking nut. I then turn down a piece of stainless steel to five millimeters to make the lever. A drop a Loctite and our lever is complete. And now I need to do the same for the cam. And because the cam is eccentric, it's gonna start engaging at its lowest point. So I'm gonna place my lever at the thickest part of the cam so that we've got enough leverage to lock the mechanism.
Now, unfortunately, I've drilled a little bit too deep and I've broken through into the flange recess there. So I've glued it in just shy of the full depth to avoid fouling the cam carrier. And now time for final assembly. And there we have the finished item. As I said before, this vice stop is adjustable to fit on a range of different vice jaws so that you can easily move it between machines in your workshop. So you can move the cam mechanism back and forth just so to find the right width for your vice and then you lock it down with this top lever. And if we flip it over, you can see that the cam mechanism is still free to move. And it's this action that locks the device to the back of your vice jaw. So I'm really pleased with the way that this vice stops turned out. But at this point, I've not tested it and I still don't know if it actually works. So let's head over to the mill and see how it performs in use. So first things first, let's adjust the cam mechanism to this particular vise. And now that's locked in place with the top lever, we can engage the cam to lock the stop to the vise. And that's actually working really well. The cam action's really smooth, it locks solidly and it's really quick to move without any tools. Here you can see it on another vise in my workshop that has different width jaws and it works just as well on this one. And because we've got a choice of holes for the stop, we can move it from one side of the vise to the other and adjust the height up and down. The real power of a vise stop is in its ability to save you time in setups. With this job here for instance, I'm milling some flats on a nut that I'm making. In between each cut, I'm able to remove the workpiece from the vise, rotate it and then replace it at exactly the same position before making the next cut. If I didn't have the vise stop in place, in between each cut I'd have to remove the milling cutter, insert the edge finder, relocate the edge of the workpiece and then swap the edge finder for the milling cutter before taking the next cut. So as you can see, using the vise stop saves a huge amount of time in setup. If you think you might be interested in making one of these vise stops for yourself, I am considering releasing this as a kit. The kit would include a set of drawings, a detailed set of instructions, and all the materials that you'd need to complete the project. If you think that might be interesting, please let me know in the comments and I'll see if I can make it happen. I've already drafted the drawings for this project and you can get your hands on these right now by becoming one of my Patreon supporters. All you need to do is to head over to patreon.com slash jonesymakes and here you can sign up for a number of different tiers. There's a free tier where you get access to workshop updates and then there are paid tiers where you get access to a number of different rewards. The first of these is the buy me a coffee level and with this level you get access to behind the scenes content and bonus videos as well as early access to my YouTube videos. Then we have the I build stuff level. Here you get everything that you did on the lower level plus you get access to the plans for my projects including the vice stop that you've just seen being built. And then we have the absolute legend level where you get access to everything in the lower levels plus you get your name listed at the end of each video and I'll send you out a pack with some stickers and some other goodies and bits and bobs that you can't get anywhere else. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more content like this in the future, let me know in the comments and also make sure you hit that subscribe button if you've not already done so, that'd be greatly appreciated. Many thanks for watching and I hope to see you on the next one.